God has shown forth his glory. Where? In the face of Jesus Christ. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. He is the embodiment of the Father. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is the only Lord God Almighty. Beside him, there is no other God. You know why that's so hard? Because we've had 1,700 years of Trinity shoved down our throats. I was in a Baptist church. I had Trinity shoved down my throat. When I started reading this word, knew I was called and sat down for three years and read, I said, this thing don't line up. Guess what happened? I got kicked out of the Baptist church. Best thing that ever happened to me. Back then it hurt. But that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Jesus is sitting there right there, the man of transfiguration, his face shone as it were the sun. Why? Because God so broke through the flesh that his face shone as it were the sun and his garments were glistening. Jesus only. Watch this. John 17, 5. Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, why does he say that? Because he's veiled in a body of flesh and blood until this metal wall of partition is broken down. Taking the ordinances that were contrary to us and nailing it to his cross. There will be a division between God and man until this veil of flesh is uh, literally done away with. And that is to say Hebrews 10, his flesh. Well, John 17, 5. Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory that I had with you before the world was. I won't right here when I was in the form of God and I made myself of no reputation, laid aside that glory to be that man, I want all that glory back, every bit of it. Jesus died upon the cross as he was dying. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He gave up the ghost, the great earthquake, the veil rent from top to bottom. The self of Jesus and the self of God became one where he was before in the beginning. Amen. The Father of glory. Not two, not three, only one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now, give me five more minutes and I'm through. When we talk about this, if you're the devil and you want to work against the church of the living God, where are you going to strike it at? The foundation. Because no matter whatever else happens, no matter how much they believe of this, that, and the other, the work of God, if you've got the foundation wrong, you have overturned the church. Now, there was, I will liken him a wise man that, uh, there was a foolish man that built his house up on the sand. The winds blew, floods came, beat against the house, and it fell because it was built upon the sand. Why the sand? Because sand shifts, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, ever learning, but never ever come to the knowledge of the truth. But the rock, but I liken him to a wise man that dig deep, founded his house upon the rock. What is that rock? Christ. Now, what we're going to do here, and I'm going to call it a night here. Just give me five more minutes. When we talk about this Christ, that Christ, searching water, what manner time the Spirit of Christ that was in them, the Old Testament prophets, they had speak of the grace that should come to us and the sufferings of Christ. You see, Christ is not only the man, but he's also the Spirit of God without measure, revealed in a body of flesh and blood. And that's what I want you to see. He is the Father, Word, the Holy Ghost. He is God Almighty. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the express image of his person. He is the brightness of his glory. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father's invisible, but I am the image of that invisible God. There's not another. I'm him. But he's working salvation of himself, and he's got himself veiled in flesh to literally pray as a man, literally through that veil to the Father until this veil is done away with on the cross. God working salvation in and of himself alone. How much did God love you to do that? <sighs> Who is the son? God provided himself a lamb. Who was that son? It's the father manifest in a body of flesh and blood. You see, Christ is the spirit of God that made himself a body of flesh and blood. Now watch 1 John 2, 22.
1 John 2, 22, it says, who is a liar? Where are all liars going to line up? All liars shall they have their part in the lake that burns with fire. All for without are, do are dogs and whoremongers and all liars. It's better to tell the truth no matter what. Watch this. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the... Now, wait a minute. Is it here or here? Either the man or the spirit or both of them? In the days of the Son of God, in his humiliation, he worked just as a man for us. In his glorification, he went back to the Father. He is the Father in glorification. Who is the Lord? 2 Corinthians 3.17 said the Lord is that spirit. Amen. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. With all with open face behind us, the glass of the glory of the Lord are changed to the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Well, the Lord is that spirit. Well, 1 John 2.22, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Well, who is the Christ? Well, Christ is the spirit of God that took on a body as Christ. Not Christ Jr., but Christ Almighty God. Not Christ Jr., but Christ is Christ. You better get that. You better get that. Christ ain't got no Christ Jr. They ain't no, they ain't no other son of God sitting there in heaven, son. That's, that person of God is the, Jesus, is the express image of his singular person. There's not another person. There's another guy another God beside me. I know not any. God don't have any cousins, aunts, and uncles up there. No sons, bless God. He's got himself and himself alone. For the Son of God is the Father, sat down in his own throne, and he did this for us. To bring many sons unto glory. He's always been God. He didn't need redemption. He's God. But who is a liar that he denieth that he, that he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Look at 1 John 2 22. He is Antichrist. Ooh, Antichrist. He is Antichrist that has denied both the Father and the Son. What's the Son? The Father in flesh. He is Antichrist that has denied both the Father and Son. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Why? Because the Son is the Father manifest in the body of flesh and blood. 1 John 2, 22. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Somebody said, well, you get all worked up. Let me tell you something. If you knew that it was heaven and hell, and you knew if you didn't open your mouth that those souls were going to hell, what would you do? You grab them, shake them, burn them, beg them, do anything you can, pop the rag, shine the shoes, and beg them, don't go to hell. You know, God said, to you, I'm going to set before you, I'm going to set before you blessings and cursings. I'm going to set before you heaven and hell. I'm going to give you a multiple choice. Go to heaven or go to hell. Then he gives you the answer. Choose life, life and death. Choose life that you may live. What else can he do? God's already came down, died for us. Went back to his former glory. Now we're in Christ's stead. Somebody said, well, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Yeah, let me ask you something here. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Now is God still in Christ? Are you in Christ's stead? You are in Christ's stead as ambassador to Christ and given to you, us, the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You're made to sit together in heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus, which is seated, S-E-A-T, set, S-I-T, at the right hand of God. Where is Christ? S-E-T, down with the Father in the throne. He set that there for us. Now we pray you in Christ's stead. He's already gone to the Father. Now we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There were the place where he's prepared for us. That's us. He is God Almighty. He sat down with the Father in his throne. Revelation 3, 21. I got another one for you. How about 1 Timothy 6, 15? He's going to show Jesus Christ who is, I'm quoting your scripture here, the blessed and only potentate. Capital P-O-T-E-N-T-A-T-E. -E -E. Not the pontiff. Not that goofy man over there sitting with a pointed hat over there in Rome. The potentate. Which is the highest office in heaven and in earth. The blessing and only potentate. King of kings. Lord of lords. Who only hath immortality. Somebody said, I've got immortality. It ain't yours. 
He is the life. He is immortality. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto nor see nor can see. No man? That's what I'm telling you. Jesus Christ, that man was made a quickening spirit. Somebody said, well, there's one God and man and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You know what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that man is God himself, the Son of Man. No man has sent it up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That man came down from heaven and ascended back up to heaven. John 3, 13. No man hath, hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, and that what blessed and only potentate, who, King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, nor see, nor can see. That means that Jesus Christ is the man, the Spirit of God, without that, that of which there is none other. Jesus Christ is that man. Now I'm going to charge, I call heaven and earth the record. Any person that goes to the Son of God as the second person of the Godhead and does not confess him as the Father, according to John 8, 24, will die in their sins. I call heaven and earth the record. You're chargeable for it, every one of you, to proclaim this gospel of Jesus Christ. You can go to your Trinity pastor and say this, Brother Beard Wright, that Trinity pastor is going to say, no, he's going to burn in the hill because he's denied the Son of God. No, you've denied the Son of God, which is the Father. Because if you acknowledge the Son, you automatically have the Father. First John 2, 22. I went to a tent over there in the Lois Stokes, which was with uh, Oral Roberts back in 1950s. I walked into her tent, and I was going to buy a tent. And I was in Dallas, Texas. She had a big tent, and I was going to buy one. I got a way bigger one than she's got right now. Whether we're going to put this up now in Longview or not, I don't know. We're going to pray about that. But I can tell you this. She looked over there, and she's prophesying to a couple of women. I walked up to her, and I was going to ask her the price of the tent. She said, I can't use you because I can't leave my father out. I looked at her. Walked away, and I said, you already have, and kept walking. You're the one that denied the Father. I acknowledge the Son. He that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. You have denied him. I'm going to tell you, you better pray. Don't believe a word I say. Don't believe what I say. The ones of Berea are more noble, more noble than the ones of Thessalonica because they search the scriptures daily to see if the things Paul preached were so. But I tell you this, you hear this word and you go back into Trinity, God have mercy on you. This is the Apostles' Doctrine. Second John, if any man comes unto you and abides not in this doctrine of the Apostles, Neither bid him Godspeed, neither bid him to the house, because if you do, you're particular of their evil deeds. Somebody said, well, Brother Beard, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared, Jesus is that man. He is that Son of Man. He is that John 3.13. He is that man that ascended up to heaven, that came down from heaven, and went back to heaven. I'm going to talk to you one more time. Look at, look at uh, uh, Romans 10, verse 9. <laughs> Here's what all the churches believe, but they have no idea what it means. When I say the only begotten Son in John 3.16, that's the only begotten God, God manifest in flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. It's not a second person of the Godhead. Somebody said, oh, yes, it is. Tell you what, let me ask you something. Take a look at Galatians 4.6. I'm telling you that that Son of God went back to the Father. I'm telling you that he is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Take a look at, please take a look at Galatians 4, verse 6, and read that to me, anybody that's got it. Let this sister here read it. Galatians 4, verse 6. Galatians 4, verse 6. Listen to her. Wait a minute, you said the Spirit of the Son. And you're calling that Spirit of the Son Abba Father? Father? 
Well, then why does the church divide him? If he sent forth the spirit of his son, the spirit of the son is the spirit of the father. It's not another spirit. So he sent forth the spirit of his son because that son now was in the days of his flesh. Now he's went back to God himself. Therefore, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into the hearts whereby we cry, Abba son, Abba junior, Abba father. Amen. Now you're getting to a place. Yeah, that's what you call for. He's wanting to use you as a leader right here in Longview. He'll heal you from all that. I know it's different. I sat there for three months going over the Word of God sometimes on one scripture all day and night wrestling with this. The Lord confirmed this and he will do it to you. Don't believe my word. You let him do it to you. And when you do, don't back up on it. Same way, sir. Don't back up on it. You don't, I, when he shows you a revelation, don't you set your hand to plow and look back. You're going to, somebody say, well, that's going, well, let's take a look at it. Somebody say, well, Romans 10, 9, and that's what God said. Let's take a look at that, Romans 10, 9. Everybody said, well, that if I conf confess with thy mouth, what? Confess with thy mouth, Jesus? Read it to me, sister. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no. Just confess with your mouth, Jesus. No, who's the Lord? The Lord Jesus. Who is the Lord, though? Take a look at 2 Corinthians 3.17. I want to know who the Lord is. Is this the Lord? Well, the Lord said unto my Lord, there's two lords there. Matthew 22.42, look at it. Matthew 22.42. Second Corinthians three seventeen, read it for me. Who's the Lord? If you confess with your mouth what? The Lord Jesus. Well you gotta well, you gotta confess him as the Lord Jesus. What is the Lord? Second Corinthians three seventeen, what is the Lord? The Lord is that second person of the Godhead. The Lord is God Junior. <laughs> the Lord is what? You mean there's only this is that, that spirit, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel, it is that, I am that, I am, I am that, that, that spirit, I am that, I am that, I am, I am that spirit, uh, I am that, I am, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel, in the last day saith God, I'll pour it my spirit. This is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And Jesus Christ is that spirit. Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, to the glory of the Father. Not the glory of the Son, the glory of the Father. Amen. That, 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 that. The Lord is that spirit. No, Brother Beard, it means he's Lord of my life. You make me sick. Lord is not Adonai, meaning he's Lord or master. It means Lord. Kyrios in the Greek. Hallelujah, Jehovah in the Hebrew. Lord, Jehovah, God, Almighty, the Father of glory. You got to confess with your mouth. That spirit, Jesus. First John 4, 1 through 3. Hereby try you the spirits to see whether they are of God. Any spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, that spirit is come in the flesh, is of God. And any spirit that confesses not, that that spirit, Jesus Christ, is come of the flesh, is not of God, and it is that spirit of Antichrist. 
Well, Brother, brother Beard, that means that a lot of souls is messed up. It is your duty to bring this word. It is your duty. We only have in church here Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 2. I want it open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ask God 24-7, 365, around the clock, never shutting those doors. And who's going to preach that? You are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Brother Beard, if I confess with thy mouth, the Lord, who is that? That spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe what? In thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Well, God raised him from the dead. Jesus said in John 3, you destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it. Why? Because I'm going to raise up my own body. You see, in the days of Jesus' flesh, that's when he's working as a man. That's his humiliation. A son of God, just a man. But in his glorification, he went back to the Father. I came from God. I went back to God. I know where I came from, and I know where I go. I came from God. I go back to God. I became a man to save you, to give you redemption, justification, sanctification, glorification. Now I go back to God. Now I bring you up to where I am, seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, where I've also made it for you, but I'm set down with the Father in the throne. <laughs> I've got you just as close to me as you can possibly get without you becoming God. Hallelujah. Well, wait a minute. If I believe, if I confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that he is that spirit, and believe in thine what? Oh, wait a minute now. We believe with the, we, we believe with the intellectual mind. I, I just speak it with my mouth. I say, Lord Jesus, I'm saved. No, believe in the heart. Well, why not the heart? Because it's in the heart the mouth speaketh. What's that heart? Romans 2, 28 and 29. Romans 2, 28 and 29. Now, I ain't going to let you off the hook. Come on. Come on. All the way. We're going all the way. We're going to find out this. We're going all the way in Jesus. Come on. Romans 2, 28 and 29. Listen to her read. He's not a Jew that is one outwardly in the circumcision of the flesh. But he is a Jew that is one inwardly circumcision of the heart. Look at this, sister. Where is all the sin? The sin doesn't come on a fleshly bag. The more I sin, I have to drag a bag of flesh around and say, boy, look at the sin he's carrying. No, it's in your heart. And look at that heart. That heart gets, and that heart gets, woof, the weight of sin that's so easy to beset us. And that heart just gets full of sin in the spirit. How do I get rid of that? How do I get rid of that sin, that body of sin? Somebody said, well, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. Guess what? He didn't come. You got to be circumcised. Well, somebody said, well, how in the world do you do that? Take a look at Romans 6, 1 through 4. We got to circumcise that heart to believe with thine heart. Not with the head, believe with thine heart. We got to believe with the spirit. How do you do that? Romans 6, 1 through 4. Listen to her. I'm dead to sin. Praise God. How'd you get there? Keep going. Know ye not that so many of us Wait a minute. Baptism don't have nothing to do with no salvation. That's a, that, that's a second work of grace. That's a work of the flesh. Here's what, the, here's what the external church says. Mark 16, he that believeth and is saved shall be baptized if he want to. Not necessary. My Bible reads in Mark 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You just said, what? Know you not? 
That is many. Yes. Why? Go ahead. Uh huh. Which is himself. Go ahead. Newness of life. Read the next verse. Why? Knowing this, why? That the body of the sins might be destroyed. So that means until I've had this, I'm going to serve sin daily, regardless of what happens, because the body of the sins of the flesh has never been literally, literally circumcised. Colossians 2, verse 10 and 11, you're preaching mighty good. Colossians 2, verse 10 and 11. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen in here? Hallelujah to God. This thing's going to be filled up. Y'all may not think so, but this thing's going to be filled up. And then we're going to get us a big, big old barn somewhere to seat about 1,000 people. Hallelujah unto God. Colossians 2, verse 10 and 11. Why? So we going to, what does circumcised mean? Oh, man, I like the way you preached. Colossians 2, verse 10 and 11. Colossians 2 10. And you, sir, go ahead. How can you make a circumcision made without hands? It's spiritual, isn't it? Go ahead on. <laughs> How are we going to put off this body of the sins of the flesh? Go ahead. How? By the circumcision of Christ. Listen to her now. How'd you get buried with it? In baptism. Go ahead. The operation of God. So whenever you what baptized, uh, as many as been baptized into Christ that put on Christ, uh, somebody said, "Well, baptism doesn't, uh, doesn't do anything." Uh, First Peter three said, "In the long days and the long sufferings and the days of Noah, wherein eight souls were saved by water, the like figure baptism doth also now save us, uh, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God." Why? Because this body of the sins uh, to believe with the heart, Hallelujah to God, not with the intellectual mind here, but believe with the heart. I have to have the heart circumcised. Uh, Hallelujah, he's not a Jew that is one uh, 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 outwardly in the circumcision of the flesh, but he is a Jew that is one inwardly in, and that circumcision of the heart in the spirit uh, and not in the letter. <laughs> Whose praise was not a man but of God. Uh, how did you get that circumcision? It said by baptism. Uh, that's who the circumcision, the operation, uh, the operation, uh, the what made without hands uh, through the operation of God. Uh, he did it. When you went down a water grave, he cut that body of sin off uh, and gave you a new what? Uh, clean renewed spirit uh, in the newness and the likeness of Jesus Christ. Uh, what? Uh, in that uh, well, Somebody said, I was baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Uh, honey, you weren't baptized. You just got wet. Uh, they said, go you know, all the world teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Father's not a name. It's a title. I'm a father. I can sign a check. Father, nobody's going to cash it because that's not my name. Son, I can sign it. Son, I am the son of my father, but it ain't going to cash because that's not my name. Your uh, name of the Holy Ghost. Uh, let's take a look at what is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. John 17, uh, Jesus said, Father, I have manifested thy name. Uh, I've kept them through thy name, not my name, your name. Uh, I've kept them through thine own name and lost none the same. The son's perdition of scripture not be, be fulfilled. Keep through thine own name. He's going into Jerusalem uh, and they're crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. 
everybody what is his name G is Jehovah Sussa salvation Jehovah is my salvation not Jehovah Junior Jehovah is my salvation my God is my redeemer what is the name of the father Jesus what's the name of the son Matthew 121 and his cost call his name Jesus for his savior see people from his sins what's the Holy Ghost name he said I'll pay the father send you another couple of hallelujah in my name what's the name of the Holy Ghost that Holy Ghost is named Jesus Peter standing up along with the other 11 on the day of Pentecost they said what shall we do what must we do Peter said standing up along the 11 said repent and be baptized have a hallelujah have the spiritual circumcision of the heart be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ which is the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost hallelujah the promises to you and to your children to many as that follow even to as many as the Lord our God shall call yeah. then why does everybody Romans 10 9 it not Acts 38 and do what he said through the spiritual circles of the heart that the body of sins of the flesh might be destroyed by baptism Ooh. Now we've got to know who he is. We've been baptized in the name of Jesus. If you hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ tonight, get in there and get baptized. I've seen people, preachers that were 70 and 80 and 90 years old, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, come up out of the water healed. Tell me about the one over there blind. He baptized her in the name of Jesus Christ. Was she blind? Did she come up out of the water? What? She could see. Why? Because it washes away that sins, the body, the sins of the flesh, what grips you and has sin in that life. It washes away that sin, and bless God, you're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Hallelujah unto God. Somebody said, I don't know if God heals everybody. Yes, he does. He healed all manner of sickness and disease, and he still does the day. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Bless God. He is Jesus Christ, the God of glory, who healeth all thy diseases and forgiveth all thine iniquities. So therefore, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, he's God Almighty, and believe in our heart. How? Through the circumcision, the circumcision made without hands by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For confession is made unto salvation with the heart, man believe unto salvation and mouth for and to sound for whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody said, I call the name Jesus. Ain't he just called Jesus? No. Brother Saul knocked down on the Damascus Road. Watch this. Brother Saul of Tarsus was knocked down on the Damascus Road. He said, Who art thou, Lord? Jehovah God Almighty. He said, I am Jesus. Speaking to him in the Hebrew tongue. He was blinded for three days. Agabus came along there and healed him. Hallelujah to God. He'd seen God. He knew that he would blind any great things he would suffer. He knew the will of God. He was healed and still his sins were not washed away. He said, Brother Saul, wash away your sins. Being baptized, calling upon the name of the Lord. How do you call upon the name of the Lord? In baptism. There's no other way to invoke that name. Wash away your sins, Brother Saul. Wash away your sins, Brother Saul. Wash away your sins, Brother Saul. Even though you've seen God, even though you've heard the voice of God, even though you know the will of God even though you've been healed of a blinded eyes bless God you still ain't saved you got to wash away your sins calling upon the name of the Lord being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Acts 4 12 is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus Acts 8 chapter they went down there only they had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus but they hadn't received the Holy Ghost yet Acts the 10th chapter Cornelius of the Italian band of the Italiano, a little spicy, spicy meatball. Hallelujah. They go down to the Italian house. Hallelujah. Cornelius of the Italiano. Hallelujah. A little spicy meatball and spaghetti. Hallelujah. Went down there. And hallelujah. As he was preaching to them. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost fell on them. For he heard them speak with tongues. He said, Can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them. Didn't suggest it. Commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts the 19 chapter. They going on down there. Oh, silver tongue orator. Hallelujah of Alexandria had already been down there through there. Apollos of Alexandria. And as they went up, Paul came down there and he said, have you received the Holy 
Ghost since you believed. Notice that they were believers, but they still weren't saved. They were believers. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Any man have not the Spirit of Christ? He's none of his. But if the Spirit of Christ dwell in you, it shall also quicken and make alive your mortal body. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, sir, we don't know whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said, unto then what will you baptize? They said, unto John's baptism. Well, that ain't the right baptism, son. He said, John truly did baptize with water under repentance. Godly saw a work of repentance, but that ain't salvation. Godly saw a work of repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. And then Paul said, he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus, laid hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spake in tongues and prophesied. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the spiritual circumcision of the heart through the operation of Christ. That spiritual circumcision made without hands that the body of the sins of the flesh might be destroyed, and there ain't no other way. Brother Beard, are you telling me that that denominational church, if I call on the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm saved? I'm saying, no, you're lost as a goose. There's only one way to call upon the name of the Lord. Brother Saul, wash away your sin, being baptized, calling, invoking the name of the Lord. That's what Peter said on the day of Pentecost, who had the keys to the kingdom. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Why? That the body of sins of the flesh might be destroyed for the remission of your sins. Until then, you're lost. Stand on your feet. I love you. We want you to be a part of this Jesus Christ International Church. Hallelujah. If you believe this word, there may be some things that I don't know, Brother Beard, you don't take nobody's word for it, you hear from God. You be led of the Holy Ghost.